A couple months ago, I started a really cool project that I'm super excited about called PixelDojo.ai. The idea here was to create the ultimate AI playground, some place where people could go, they could use the latest AI models, including things like upscalers, image to image, style transfer, everything that you see that's sort of cutting edge in this space. And so today I wanna to take you on a deeper dive and show you some of those features so you can see what it's all about. When you come to the site, you can see a few of the features that we offer, but rather than just showing you the sales page that you can come and check out, let's jump in and actually take a look at each of these features. Now, the first thing is the AI image creator. This one is sort of what kicked it all off and started it. With this, you can see all of the different Stable Diffusion XL models that are pretty popular out there and that you can sort of play around with. So you can go in here and you can look at Juggernaut XL version 9, for example, or Anime XL if you want to create anime images. Simply select a model and then enter a prompt and you can start generating images right away. I have some examples down here below and if you wanted to create one of these, like say this robot covered in moss, select it and you can see you get the prompt right away. Sunlight filters through a dense rainforest canopy, illuminating a tiny robot, rusty and weathered, its eyes still glow with a soft light. Its little form sits nestled amongst vibrant moss and overgrown roots. This is using Juggernaut V8. And you can see here, you also have some other options down in the advanced section to change the aspect ratio, change guidance scale, and all of the other things you'd expect. Now we can click the generate button and it's going to go ahead and generate a couple of images for us right away. And within just a few seconds, you've got two of these adorable robot images that come back. You can click on it to bring it into full screen mode, or you can simply click on the download button. And one thing to note, unlike a lot of other cloud services that offer image generation, I don't store any of your prompts and I don't store any of your images. So if you like what comes back, click this download button that's gonna download the image to your browser right away. Let's see up here. And you can save the image and look at it later. Licensing is completely open, so you can use these images any way you want, even commercially, I don't really care. Next up is one of my newer features, actually. It's called the Face Enhancer. What you can do is you can upload an image, and then you sort of adjust this slider between quality and accuracy. Accuracy means it's going to be true to the original image, and quality means that it's going to be a higher quality face fix. Now, when you click on fix it, it takes just a minute. And what it's going to do is it's going to run that image that you supplied through my stable diffusion. It's actually on the back end, a custom comfy UI workflow. And it's going to give you back this difference here. Now you can see right away the quality between the original image and the one that my system generated is massive. Kind of a night and day difference here. So you can see it was really blurry before. You can look at her eyes specifically, the mouth, the teeth, and then you can see how much higher quality is after the fact. Pretty cool. Now this works for images of all types. You just upload them and then you get this nice slider so you can get a comparison before and after. And of course, you get the full final image that you can of course download over here on the left-hand side. Moving on to something that's pretty cutting edge is style transfer. You can see from the example that I have below, you can take a source image and then you can apply a style image. What it does is it takes that source image and it uses that in a control net. It actually creates that as sort of the base image that it's going to use and then it applies the styling or the sort of feel of the second image, the style image to that. And in return, it generates this final image that sort of combines the two. You can do all kinds of cool things here. Let's do an example. First, we'll select a source image. We'll use one of this woman. And then we'll select a style image. For the style image, I'm gonna use this really interesting one of this goat with flowers in its hair. And then for the prompt, we're just going to say, a photo of a woman with flowers in her hair. Click on generate, and we'll see what ends up coming back from this. All right, super interesting. So you can see it took that original image and it has that overall look to it. You can see the woman's face is very similar. It does give her a mustache, and I think that comes from this goat. We've got this super hairy goat. It's applying the style of that. It did get the flowers and everything else in her hair, and you can see that it changed what she's wearing. Obviously, you can have a lot of fun with this one. 
Now, moving on, we can go to our creative upscaler. This is really powerful. This uses a series of not only multi-diffusion, but also tiled control nets. I did a sort of deeper dive on this one already. So I'm just gonna take this and show you an example or two. For this, we can take that image of that robot that we created earlier. I'm not gonna change any of the default settings and you can see it automatically has a prompt, a negative prompt. You can select style, default, portrait, and anime. And then there's a whole bunch of advanced settings that you can select from. We're not gonna to touch any of that. We're just gonna go with the defaults and click on upscale. But you can see here that it gives you a lot of extra flexibility if you wanna go in here and create something completely new. Now, upscale, you can, by default, 2X, so it's gonna be double the original size, but you can go as high as 16X on here as well. And here's that before and after. Now, if you take a look down here at the moss in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see how much extra detail is being added there. The cool thing, like I said, is this is now double the resolution, so you can take this image and you can download it. You can even upscale it again if you really wanted to. But what if you wanna do sort of the opposite of all this? Instead of text to image, you wanna do image to text. Well, we've got that option too with the new image to prompt feature. Simply drag and drop an image. We'll use that same cute robot from earlier and you can click on generate a prompt. It's gonna analyze the image and it's gonna return an actual prompt and you can use that in the upscalers or you can use that to create another kind of similar looking image with another diffusion tool. And here's a prompt that we get back. A small robot standing in the middle of a forest, a 3D render, and then it gives some other prompt tips that are typically good for stable diffusion so that it understands the subject and sort of the style of art. So you can click this button over here on the right that copies it to your clipboard. And then you could go back to the AI image creator if you wanted, and you could create another image. Let's see what it comes back with for that. And here we get a very similar look and feel. It's a tiny robot in the middle of a forest, kind of just like the original one was. You have that nice cinematic quality to it. Looks really cool. Now this one is my multi-diffusion upscaler. This one's brand new, and I just added this maybe two days ago. You just drop an image here, You'll notice there's no other options. This one is really fine tuned on the back end to give you a great result. I notice that it has, I think in my opinion, sharper details and it returns a little bit better image quality than the Creative Upscaler without the need for any tuning. By default, this one's going to double the size of your image. And as you can see here, it's gonna add a whole bunch of new details. So if we look at the leaves over here, look how they're sort of blurry to begin with and then they're ultra sharp afterwards. Same thing goes for the moss down below. And then the robot, his arm and hand, you can see the detail in just his arm there, and you just get a lot more detail overall, an extra sharpness and focus that I think is somewhat missing in a lot of stable diffusion images when they come out. By default, this is going to double the size of your image. You can see all of that detail down there in the bottom, really incredible. This works well for architecture images, images of people. Actually, let's do one of a person. We'll choose the woman that we actually did the face enhancement with earlier. All right, and let's take a look at this before and after. And wow, you can see, just look at the hair details, first of all. And we get to the eyes, look at that eye before and after. Just really cleans this image up a whole bunch. Even look at the, the cardboard box, her clothing, everything else. And the cool thing is this is more than double the original resolution. So now you can take this image and it's far more usable if you need to use it in something like a website or some other thing that needs a higher resolution. Next up is one that has garnered a lot of attention. I actually built out an entire endpoint for you to connect to Stable Diffusion 3. Now this is not only Stable Diffusion 3, it's also Stable Diffusion 3 Turbo. You can select from which one you want there. Select the aspect ratio, prompt, negative prompt, all the controls that Stability AI provides via their API, it's all included here. So you can come in here, I've got a whole bunch of example images. One of my favorites is this tortoise down here. Portrait photograph of an anthropomorphic tortoise seated in a New York City subtrain. And you can click on this and it'll just jump in and generate an image for you using Stable Diffusion 3. And here's our anthropomorphic turtle sitting on a New York City subway. Really cool. 
I love the quality that comes back from Stable Diffusion 3, and it really has great text. I've got an entire video covering that that you can check out, but it's something you can come in here and play around with at Pixel Dojo. Similarly, they also released an image to image model. The image to image model is really fascinating to me because you're able to take an initial image. In this case, we'll do that tortoise that you just saw and then describe your image. What we'll say is a tortoise holding bananas. We'll click generate and, and here we go. Here's our original tortoise on the left and here's our tortoise with the bananas on the right. Allows you to add some really creative details. Now, I think my original image here did a little bit better job, but you can always play around with it and see what you get back. Then last but certainly not least is a control net that I set up that uses a couple of different methods in the back end to create consistent characters. Now you can see here from the examples and you can click on one of these, it'll load up this photo of this woman with pink hair and sort of cat ears. And you can see you can add a prompt. So what do you actually want back? Let's say, let's say photo of a woman running a marathon. It's obviously vastly different from that original image. And you can see here, you can go into the advanced settings, you can add a negative prompt, and then you can say, how much does the prompt influence the image that comes back? You have a slider for that. And how much does the original image and the final image resemble each other? Click on generate. And now you can see the same woman in the first picture, now looking like she's running a marathon. She's got a ponytail. You can see all the people in the background and it looks like she's got her running jersey on. Really cool and something that you can toy around with. It's a really nice way to build a single model and then use this in multiple different places. You can also take this final image, download it, and then run this through the face enhancer or even one of the image upscalers to get back an even higher quality image. And we also have an affiliate program. You can join our Discord so you can get tips and tricks on how to use this in various different ways. I actually answer those questions a lot of times, as does a pretty active community on there. And then we're featured on Product Hunt, so I'd love you to upvote if you can. I hope that answered all of your questions about Pixel Dojo and the offering. I'm always adding new features to this. In fact, I've added three new features just this week, so I definitely think it's worth the subscription and the cost of entry, but you be the judge of that. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. Otherwise, as always, I'm Brian Lovett. We'll check you next time. I'm the virtual prophet in the tech town, breaking down AI, wearing the crown, from basics to complex, never let you down, all your tech AI, earning the renown.